Hey guys, this is George with Firehouse Music, and uh, today I wanted to uh, expound upon uh, a point that I brought up uh, a few videos back. I think it was during the, the quarantine uh, lessons, and and that was uh, on modes. We uh, we talked about the modes, how I prefer to teach the modes, and um, um, and how to bring up the best sound of the modes. And this is something a little bit similar, but also different. Um, there's actually two concepts. One of them, so basically what we're trying to do is take the modes and build chords with them. One of the, um, there's a professor at Berkeley, Rick Peckham, and he uh, uh, came up with a really fine instructional. Uh, if you haven't watched it, go find it. It's really good. Um, and the, the whole premise uh, that he had on, on this modal type of playing was uh, stacking fours. And that means you take a, a fourth on the guitar, that's like a, most of you guys know as a double stop. So you'd be playing two adjacent strings on the same fret. So we'd be doing something like this, right? That's a fourth. So if we do that with four, uh, we'll basically take four notes and stack them in fourths like that. We end up with chords like this. They have a very like a vivo sounded, sort of like, I mean, you could call this a B minor 11, but, but it can really be anything. Function like anything in the key of uh, in the key of C or in the mode in the mode of D Dorian, right? And what he did was he took the whole scale and he lined it up across the fretboard, and he did that across the board. So then you end up with something like this: you have that, then you have this. Not in so forth. diatonic in, uh, in music theory in academic circles well all, all it is is you're just you're doing quartal harmony you're just putting chords on top of each other and uh, that reduces the variation on the chord types that you end up with so you end up with these very ambiguous sounding chords so you basically use that to comp over and anytime you'd have a and this is in a, in a jazz environment um, you use that kind of playing to to uh, anytime you would see the mode now the, the advantage of that is like if you are dealing with a in a tonal environment, you play in a tonal environment, you're um, you're going to be playing with the Dorian, the Mixolydian, and either the major or the Lydian mode, and that means that your um, Ionian, if you want to use the model word for but for me it's just major. Um, if you that means that you can take the same scale, the same chord shapes, and use them uh, to comp over. The entire thing while well, well, the bass player is sort of like adding the, the harmony. So it, it creates very noble um, harmonic situations. But that's not what I want to talk about today. Uh, that was a long introduction to for me to not talk about it. If you if you get the hint and you know what I'm talking about, mess with it. It's a cool concept. Go look up Rick Peckham and check out his instruction. It's really good. Or if you want me to talk about this, just let me know and uh, I'll make a dedicated video for that because it, it definitely will require uh, its own video. What I want to talk about instead is a concept that I got from uh, Mark Levine, um, and that is you take a mode and you build a chord that contains all of the notes of that mode, right? So my favorite mode uh, of the major scale is Lydian, right? So you have in the key of C, because, well, in the key of, uh, it'll be the key of G if we're talking scales, but uh, major scales, but uh, uh, this will be the, the mode of C Lydian. And you have that sound. Um, the chord that would contain sort of all the notes on it, I'll play a little slower so you can hear it. Right? It kind of wants to sound like a, like a G major because that's the, that's the scale, but if I put, if I play the chord for context, right, we end up playing this chord. Seven sharp eleven. You have that sound. So now notice when I play the scale. There's no. There's no doubt that this is the home note. Um. 
And we can do the same thing with say the um, the Dorian mode. We're talking about Dorian, Mixolydian, and so on. Um, and I could pl I could play a, a C minor seven, right, and then play. But uh, um, I prefer, and that's not wrong, you, you could do that and you'll be totally fine, but I prefer to play a minor 13, because then, then there's, no, there's no hiding the fact that I'm playing the Dorian mode, because I, I, I'm including that uh, raised sixth in my chord. going we can do this with really anything um if if i um i'm playing like a, a i don't know a, a g13 then uh, the mixolydian mode would work fine some of the more um, exotic modes um, something like um, uh, let's say Phrygian Dominant it's a pretty popular mode with uh, heavy metal people and uh, so that's that scale fifth mode of uh, harmonic minor scale if you guys are familiar with that if not don't worry about it it's, it's this scale this right and then the chord of that out of that is this one is uh, that E uh, 7 flat 9 right this is not very metal but that is the chord that that scale uh, engenders um, so why why do this exercise well number one it, it sort of solidifies the relationship between scales and chords, which I think is very important when you're trying to, you're trying to learn how to improvise. Um, one, of the, one of the most important things is to uh, sort of connect the sounds of chords with the sounds of scales. And um, it's, you want to be able to hear what you play before you play it. And that's only possible if you can identify sounds the same, same way that, that an artist can identify colors when they paint. Imagine if you had a, a, somebody who paints, and I don't know the first thing about art, I'm not a, I'm not a visual artist, um, but if, uh, um, if they would just take paint and just throw it on the canvas and then try to figure out what that looks like. Well, a lot of musicians in the early stages, they, they play that way. They uh, sort of like put the track on and they play and they hope for the best. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't audiate, they don't hear what they're um, trying to play um, before they actually play it. And uh, doing exercises like these um, helps you sort of create that, that sound in your head um, before, you, before you hear it. So that's important. Now maybe you're not into like the jazzy chords, like you get turned off by chords like this. You don't like that or this. Right. Um, and that's totally fine. Um, if you if you wanted to take something um, like this, but uh, apply it in a more rock or pop environment, all you have to do is split the notes out between two chords, and then you end up with something that you can use in a in a pop or a rock environment. Um, and I use pop in a very generic term. I don't mean I just mean non jazz music. So. Uh, for instance, with our example for Lydian, right, if we're playing uh, this, uh, this chord and you don't like it, and you're like, oh, well, but I like the idea, I want to be able to do this, but I, I want something that would work with chords that I would actually want to use. Uh, then you can do something like play a C major 7, 
but I seem to try it even just to see and then play this version of this like a D at 11 added chords work well in rock in the 90s it was all about the add 9 chords you know? but uh, um, add 11 chords are nice too so you can play this C to a D a D at uh, 11 and then just sort of like make a little um, a little track or backing track for this right and there's you get the same effect once again you you sort of like encompassed the entire sound of the mode into a pair of chords instead of a single chord um, so it works, it works just as well. I prefer the, the single chord ideas just because um, you can really hear the, the tension notes rubbing against that tonic. Um, but if you find that, you know, you don't like it, you can absolutely split up these things into, into groups of two chords and then play chords that are more palatable to you. Um, the, the, I know the, the example that probably like that seven flat nine chord a lot of people they hear like, ah, it's an ugly chord, I hate it, I don't want to play it. Uh, that's fine, you can play an E major chord, or an E seven chord if you want, if you like dominant seven chords, or just an E chord, and then go to an F, oh, sorry, that was a C, so, an F, C major seven. So, um, so an E to an F, E to an F, or if you want, a, an E, F major 7 sharp 11 that's just the F you know the rush F right it's an F with the open uh, second and the first string open as well you play between those two chords and you end up with the same thing here where that scale works just as well um, with, with those um, uh, pairs of chords so give this idea a try, add it to your practice. Uh, it'll definitely pay off. These are not the only examples, but if I sat here and give you all the modes with all the chords and all the, would be here for a long time. Um, if you're interested in uh, me going deeper into this, you can just request it and I'll be happy to do a longer video or teach you on the next uh, masterclass. We do um, um, sort of like guitar workshop seminars and stuff here at Firehouse Music. And, uh, and if you're interested in stuff like this, or so how to how to paint with music, um, I'll be happy to teach you. Just just uh, just drop it down in the comments or send me an email, and uh, I'll be happy to do it. So that's it for today, and uh, I will catch you guys next time.